G'day, it's Robbie again. In one of my last videos, I showed you how you can use a shear tool to get a finishing cut, a fine finish on, or a very fine finish on troublesome steel, steel that tears up feathers and uh, galls basically. Um, and you use a shear tool uh, as a replacement for. Uh, the round nose high speed steel cutter finishing tool that most people would use. This has been around for <laughs> as long as lathes have been around. And it generally does a very good job. Uh, on machine grade steel, it's, it's excellent. Uh, when you get into the flaky stuff, the stringy stuff that feathers up, you can have trouble if you don't set them up dead right. I often see people in forums asking how do you get a good finish on bad steel. Well, they should be using a cutter like this to begin with and uh, not trying to do it with carbide or anything like that. And uh, if they set up correctly, it ought to do a good job. But even then, you can still have trouble if the steel is particularly bad. Um, it's tearing up. So the alternative is to use a shear tool, which is what I've got here, which is what was I showed in the last video, uh, finishing some steel. And in the last video, I didn't really give you a good look at the end, but basically you can see the way it's ground. You've got that zero to inwards to a on a 30 degree angle on the end. You've got a 10 degree relief back to give it some end clearance. And the vertical compared to the base is 90 degrees. And of course a shear tool you can use that on any section of that blade. So when it comes into contact with say the centre of the job can cut like that or like that or like that. So if it gets blunt in one spot you can move it up and down. That's another thing I forgot to mention. So okay, um, I was doing some machining today and uh, I was actually using it on some aluminium and I thought well it's not just going to give a good finish on um, steel, it can also work on other metals, brass, aluminium, anything you want to get a good finish on. So I, th I thought I'll just do a quick video showing you me machining up some homebrew aluminium and you can just see how fine a finish it does. So it won't be a very long video, just a, a quick and dirty one. All right, well here's that piece of homebrew aluminium which was uh, melted down scrap of alloy from various things. And it basically started off looking like that. It's another piece which I did, easy to do, just look at my videos on how to do your own round stock aluminium easy and uh, you don't need a lot of expensive equipment to do it just uh, you can do it with a wood fire there's various furnaces you can make up on the videos and uh, they all work good so uh, I've got this set up I've started to do a cut and I suddenly thought oh maybe people like to see how this works on aluminium so I got the camera out and I'll just do a quick video so we'll fire up the lathe and uh, we'll, uh, we'll just do a bit I'll come in close so you can see how it goes uh, once again, we're uh, on our finest feed and uh, we're, uh, we're machining towards the headstock. With the shear tool you can't go in very deep otherwise it can dig in and jag. So no more than a foul. But as you can see how, you can see how I just did that <laughs> with carbide and she really ripped it up. Well now we just go through with the shear tool and we'll We'll clean it up and it should be a nice looking piece of uh, homebrew aluminium. I'm spitting at 465 RPM, so uh, being soft, uh, it shouldn't have any trouble at all. I'm just doing it dry and I'll feed it in. You can see how the cuttings are coming off in wispy strings. Totally different from what we had using the, the carbide cutter. And you can see it's not, uh, it's not galling up. I'm doing this dry. Aluminium can gall on the, uh, on the cutter, in which case you use some kerosene on it. I'm just doing this dry and uh, 
there's plenty of stock up so it's ready to use next time I want to do uh, something. I have got a job in mind for this so uh, this is just a bit of preparatory work. You'll also notice in this video how well this metal plate down here keeps all the rubbish off the waves. I mean it's as clean as a whistle down there. Um, a great way to protect your uh, your lathe bed. Just put a metal plate there that will go under the uh, under the chuck. You can always take it off. I just use the uh, uh, the two bolts for the thick steady. And uh, yeah, you can always take it off if you have to put a really big item in there. But it, most of the time you don't. And uh, it stays there and it keeps all the crap off the ways. Uh, it's a it's a good good way to go. I'm doing a second pass here just to get a really good finish on it as I was uh, taking off some pretty feathery stuff there so we'll just uh, run it through one more time and uh, get the best finish we can with it. Once again I'm still at 465 RPM and I've also uh, moved the cross slide forward so I can get right up the shoulder uh, near the chuck jaws. Uh, you can see <laughs> where I stopped up here and uh, I didn't have it set up quite right but anyway this time we'll go right through and uh, but you can see it's doing a, a fantastic job okay here's our finished job pretty nice huh <laughs> and it didn't cost me a bean so you're going to buy that piece of aluminium in the shop and see what they charge you for it so you pour your own aluminium melt your own aluminium, pour it in a bit of pipe, machine it back. As you can see, it's pretty good. Tiny little bit of porosity in there, but overall that's a nice bit of alloy. Certainly good enough for, uh, for using. Anyway, there you go. You can see how well the shear tool worked. And uh, yeah, it's a good cutter to uh, do a bit of a experimenting with and uh, Anyway, that's it. I hope you found the video interesting and got something out of it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.